figure. And uh, it's really important that you draw a figure that is useful uh, and it's gonna help you uh, answer the question. So two characteristics of a good drawing uh, are that uh, it's big enough um, and it's accurate. Right. So really read the question carefully before you start drawing. And don't start drawing until after you know what's going on in the question. In this case, let's say a cube has three faces painted green and the remaining face is painted blue. The total area of the blue faces is 48 square centimeters. What is the volume of the cube in cubic centimeters? Right. So in this case, they describe a cube, but they don't actually show it to you. Uh, so draw it, right? Uh, now, I have a lot of practice drawing cubes. I know that people tend to be scared of them, but just learn how to do it. It's really not that tough. Okay, in this case, it says the cube has three faces painted green, right? So green, green, green. Now, why is this important? Why, why did the picture help me with this? Well, it's not always easy to remember that a cube has six faces, right? So if three of the faces are green and the rest are painted blue, then the other sort of three faces are going to look like this, blue, blue, and blue, right? And again, not the world's most profound truth, but having that picture is really helpful because it forces me to say, okay, I get one, two, three blue faces, and the total area of the blue faces is 48, right? So I have three blue faces, and the total area is 48. They're all the same, right? It's a cube, so they're all squares. So the area of one blue face has got to be 40 divided by 3, which is 16, right? Okay, so I'm starting to make progress. If I know that the area of the bl one blue face is 16, uh, then I know this is 4 by 4, and I'm done, right? Uh, 4 by 4 is, uh, and 4 is a cube, so a volume of a cubed is side cubed, volume equals 4, cubed, volume is equal to 64, and you're done, right? Um, let's try a slightly harder question that again re requires you to draw your own picture. Uh, in this case, they say points X and Y are on the surface of a sphere that has a volume of 288 pi cubic inches. What is the greatest possible length in inches of the line segment XY? Okay, so obviously it's a bit tougher to draw a sphere uh, on a flat piece of paper, so let's just draw a circle. Uh, and remember that it's actually three dimensions. Now if we start drawing potential x, x, y's and we want to make it as long as possible because it's asking for the greatest possible length, we start to see that, you know, I have to hit both sides, like they have to lie on the edges. And not only that, the edges, have, in order to be as far apart as possible, have to be on, exactly on the opposite sides, right? So what I'm describing actually is the diameter, right? So I know that x, y has to be a diameter, uh, which is really useful. And again, it's something that doesn't become apparent until you draw a picture. Um, now that I know that x, y is a diameter, I know that I can find the radius uh, to find the length of um, x, y, right? Uh, and I know the way of relating radius to volume, which they give me, is this formula, right? So they tell you that volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, right? And uh, 288 pi equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Right. Uh, I can, the pi's drop out, uh, divide 288 by 4 thirds, and we get 216, yeah, 3 fourths, 216 equals r cubed, and we can find the answer, uh, the value of r, by taking the cube root of both sides. And everyone knows that the cube root of 216, oops, is <laughs> one second, I'm sorry. I should know this. I think it's six, but I just want to double check. 216. Yeah, six. Okay, so I know that the radius is six. So I don't answer with six. I know that that's saying for x, y, so I have to put in 12. Number 18 out of 20, this is a tough question, right? It says the right cylinder above has height h and a circular base with radius e. If e equals h, what is the volume of the cylinder in terms of e? Uh, okay, so again, we see this phrase in terms of, which means that we can use our own numbers, right? Now, the important thing to remember here is that e equals h. Um, so let's do that. Um, so first of all, what do you want e to be? Well, let's make E something easy again, something like, I don't know, four. So let's say E equal four. That means H equals four, right? 
Um, and we also know that E is the radius of the circle, which is probably going to be relevant because the question is asking for the volume of the cylinder. And you have to remember what the formula for volume of cylinder is. Uh, I can help you with that. Uh, volume of cylinder is pi r squared h. I will not be with you when you take the test. Um, fortunately, this, this uh, formula is at the beginning of every math section, so um, you don't have to have it memorized. I do recommend memorizing it, though. Anyway, uh, pi r squared h. Okay, we have an h, so that's good news, right? We have 4 for the h. We don't have an r, but we just said before that r is really e, so we can replace um, that with that. Uh, so we have 4 squared and pi, right? Uh, so volume is pi 4 cubed. Volume is 4 cubed is 64, uh, 64 pi. And again, we want to look at the answer choices and find the one that equals our target number. That is what the answer is asking, uh, the question is asking for in this case, the volume of the cylinder, right? So um, we have 2 times. And E is 4, 16, 2 times 16 is 32 pi. That's not correct. It looks good, though. All right. um, pi times 4 cubed is 64 pi. That matches. Again, we don't stop. 3 times 16, right? 3 times 16 is 48. Uh, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, well, 64 divided by 3, I should know this, um, times 4, okay, that's 85 and a third uh, pi, that's not going to be good, right? And the last one is pi r, uh, sorry, pi e to the fourth, uh, 4 to the fourth is a big number, right? Uh, 256 pi, clearly not right.